Well, let's get started. Let me introduce my panel to you right away. I'm joined by TV Mohandas Pai, political commentator, chairman, Manipal Global Education Services, uh, Professor Apurvanand, professor of Hindi at the University of Delhi, Rakesh Sinha, RSS Pracharak, uh, Rauli, an activist, and A. Sarvanand of the DMK. Thanks all so much uh, for being on the program. Professor Apurvanand, first to you. To all those who have over the years been saying that in popular discourse, it all may, almost seems to the entire India, to all of India, that Hindi is our national language, though of course that's not what the constitution has in mind. In fact, it's been struck down by the court a time and time again. But do moves like this just underscore that? Yes, they do, and uh, they do in a very chauvinistic manner. And we, sh we should be very cautious about that because Hindi is not a national language. And if at all, then all uh, Indian languages are national languages. And India should be treated as a, a translating unit, a huge translating unit. So we shouldn't, by uh, a government dictate or by a notification, uh, make any language um, the supreme language of India, uh, uh, even even if it's Hindi. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay uh, Rakesh Sinha, to those who say that in a multi-language country, how can we have one language that is perhaps seen as superior to the others? How can one language be purported? Oh. Isn't it against uh, multilingual politics that we have? Isn't uh, it's against multilingualism? It's also against multiculturalism. How would you respond, Mrs. Sinha? This is the feature of Indian civilization that we have more languages than any other country and any other civilization. Mm -hmm. Merely Northeast have the languages and dialectics, who, who, which are large, large, larger number than the entire European dialectics and the languages. But the question, question is that we are, we are not treating language as a region of the, the, uh, division. There are certain people, certain pseudo secularists who consider languages as the basis of subnationality. In India, languages are not the basis of subnationality. Languages are the carrier of the culture. We, have, we, we celebrate our own culture in, in languages. So there is no question of imposing one language on another. This is merely a move to have a one lingua franca. Why, how long English should be our lingua franca? How long? There must be some move, Mahatma Gandhi to Vinoba Bhabe and large number of the people, Ra Raj Gopalachari, they have all worked for the promotion of Hindi. Mm -hmm. And you know, in United Nations, there are six languages, but three, at least three languages are, uh, have lesser speakers than the Hindi. Okay. But Hindi is not the official language of the United Nations. Because we don't respect our own language, we are getting divided on the question of polarity is in danger. There is no danger of polarity. But Mr. If Sinatra... We, we, we respect all Indian languages. Okay. They are all equal. But, but what are we doing to, to yeah. put it out there that we respect all languages, that all languages are at par as per the constitution, when only one language is picked up? We've seen a BJP spokesperson uh, go to the courts and say, make Hindi the national language. The court, of course, struck that down and says there's no provision in the constitution. The same spokesperson has said, make Hindi compulsory across India from class 1 to 8. So uh, it's quite apparent that we are batting for one language over the others. Isn't that Mr. Sinha, quickly? No, no. They look, go, go through the entire debate of the Constituent Assembly and the, the debate on Sanskrit and English. You just, in, in Sanskrit and Hindi. We just see the, how, how Ambedkar has taken a stand on the Sanskrit. But people are not speaking the truth. They are, they are speaking the politically correct thing. The nation is not built up by the politically correct thing. Nation is built up by the civilizationally correct thing. And I think that Hindi, promotion of Hindi is not the degradation of any other language. We have a great culture, culture, okay. cultural heritage in the Tamil, in, in Malayalam, in okay. Bengali. We have the national, national song, national song in Bengali and Sanskrit okay. mix. Okay. So this is not I a question of degrading the language. Those okay. who are questioning that polarity is under threat. In fact, it is their, their, their pseudo secularism is under threat. Okay. Okay, I, I, I see what you're saying. Mohan, that's why I can see you sort of nodding in disagreement. Come in here. Uh, the point that Rakesh Sinha is making that promoting Hindi is not happening at the cost of any other language. I think his statement is totally wrong. Mm. Language is a very emotional issue. We should not uh, forget the, the, the fight against the imposition of Hindi in the South, especially mm -hmm. in Tamil Nadu in the mm -hmm. 1960s. Mm -hmm. 
And I think in the South, we all know Hindi, we respect Hindi, we can speak Hindi, mm -hmm. but none of the people in the North of the country can speak any South Indian language. Absolutely. It has become imposition of a North Indian language on the rest of the country, which all of us will oppose. We love Hindi, we love our country, we are patriots, but we are not willing to accept the imposition of any language by Delhi. This cultural nationalism by a small set of people sitting in Delhi who think they have the right to impose their language on us, which is totally wrong. Mm -hmm. Hindi will become popular by the films, by popular things. It will not come by imposition. And the government of India thinks they're going to impose it on the rest of in this country. Mm -hmm. I think they're in for deep trouble. It will shake up the country. Mm -hmm. It will arouse emotions which are very, very suppressed right now all over the country. Mm -hmm. And I think all right-thinking people will oppose this, uh, oppose this imposition of the language. I don't <coughs> agree with Mr. Sinha that, you know, we, we are not oppressing any language. Mm -hmm. Ask Mr. Sinha to tell us how much money the government of India is spending on all the national languages. What is the grant given to all the national languages? It's a pittance. They don't encourage national languages all across the country. Okay. And in parliament, if you speak a national language, we want a translation. Mm -hmm. I speak Konkani, which is a national language. Mm -hmm. If I speak in Konkani, I want a translation facility in parliament for all everything else. Mm -hmm. I think it's totally wrong, undemocratic, against, okay. the idea, against the idea of what India stands for. And okay. this chauvinism should be nipped in the bud immediately. Okay, chauvinism which should be nipped in the bud. Yes, Mr. Sinha, you want to make a point quickly. <laughs> no. No, he's, he, he's failing to make a difference between mother tongue and the national language. No, no nobody can, uh, is questioning the mother tongue. A, 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 a Tamilian has a mother tongue of Tamil, mm -hmm. a Malayali has a mother tongue of Malayali. Mm -hmm. and, we are, uh, and I expect that uh, North Indians should learn the uh, South Indian languages. They, they are all our languages. It, it is cultural yeah. nationalism. Does Mr. Sinha know a South Indian language? Does Mr. Sinha know a South Indian language? Can you speak Kannada, Tamil or Telugu? Kind, kindly don't create a binary. Kindly don't create a binary between okay. Hindi and non-Hindi. Kindly don't create a binary. You know a South Indian language, Mr. Sinha? And India has you know a South Indian language, Mr. Sinha? We are in, uh, we okay. are in 2017. Where, where, where the inter interlanguage inter translation are progressed. We, we, we expect that the uh, literature in Tamil is not a question of that. It is not a question of imposing, it is a question of promoting the languages. Hmm. Okay, it's a question of promoting the languages. I think the point that Mr. Pai was trying to make that it's all well to ask a certain part of the country not familiar uh, with Hindi or not familiar enough with Hindi to learn Hindi. But what about the reverse in other parts of the country? That's, of course, the point that is being uh, made. But Mr. Sarwan, and coming yes. here, we've heard the president say in the past that, you know, Hindi is a link language for all of India. So, you know, in one sense, English is the language that we use to communicate with the rest of the world and Hindi perhaps a language that we need to communicate with each other uh, in the country. How, how do you come in on that? This is, of course, a very emotive issue for you uh, see, and your party. Uh, <clears throat> yes. Yes, this is a very, very emotive issue uh, for the people uh, south of India because uh, language is identified with a culture and we would, any imposition of the language, I would say it is cultural imperialism that is uh, thrust upon us, which we will oppose. We have opposed it, not now. From 1938, we have opposed it. Right. See, coming into this language, link language issue, I want to clarify one thing. The Madras presidency in 1945 during the constitution, constitution assembly debate, the Madras presidency wanted to join the Union of India on only one condition that there will be two languages and Hindi will not be made as a national language. Right. And uh, when there is already a national language or sorry, a link language, uh, what is the necessity for another uh, uh, link language? Uh, right. Our leader, uh, Pere Ranger Anna, he beautifully put it, when there are two dogs, why we need two doors, a big door for a big dog and a small door for a small dog. Similarly, when there is already a link language okay. with which we can communicate to the rest of the world, mm. why do we need another language to communicate with the rest of the country? Okay. We can communicate with the same language. Okay. Professor Apurvanand, come in here. Does this concept of link language really work and does it take away from linguistic equality? See, uh, it does work, but it works voluntarily. It doesn't work uh, by a government dictate. And that was happening, uh, if you look at uh, the Indian scene and anti-colonial struggle pre-independence. But what happened after independence? Raja Raj Gopalachari was a Hindu in, Hindi enthusiast uh, before independence. But after independence, he had to fight against uh, imposition of Hindi mm -hmm. on other uh, regions or other linguistic regions. Mm -hmm. So that we have to keep in mind. We shouldn't... Uh, uh, we shouldn't uh, be selective about historical memories. And Hindi 
was being adopted by other regions, by uh, Kannadigas, by Tamilians, by Malayalis. But when they saw that the North Indians, especially those who call themselves people from Hindi-speaking region, mm -hmm. are not at all mm -hmm. eager to learn South Indian languages. In mm -hmm. fact, the three language formula was subverted mm -hmm. or subvertised by the North Indian school system. Mm -hmm. Because what they did, mm -hmm. they, op they took Hindi, they took English, and they took Sanskrit. Mm -hmm. And they didn't opt for any other Indian languages, mm -hmm. be it Northeastern, be it Manipuri, be it Assami, be it Bengali, be it Bangla, be it Tamil. So how do you build this trust? Okay. This trust has to come okay. and it has okay. to come voluntarily. Mm -hmm. And all languages have to feel that's equal. A, See what has that's happened. A good point. In the last three years, what we have seen, uh, uh, let me sure. just complete. Sure. We have seen Indian currency note bear in the numerals, the so-called Devanagari numeral, mm -hmm. which is constitutionally wrong. Mm -hmm. Because in constitution, wrong. we have our numerals, which are international numerals. Mm -hmm. Mind you, they are Indian numerals, international okay. numerals. Mm -hmm. But what has been done? It has been replaced with so-called Devanagari numerals. Mm -hmm. It is being done by stealth and it is cheating. It shouldn't be done. If you are cheating people yeah. and if you are cheating by government deeds, mm -hmm. then no, n nothing okay. you are doing uh, evokes trust and okay. it would be opposed. Okay. And, and that's why I think this present notification won't be seen very favorably uh, by other uh, linguistic areas. Okay. Rahul, if you can come in at this point, the point that Professor Arvo, uh, Apurvananda is making is that there seems to be a trust deficit here and, and if people want to learn a certain language, want to be uh, proficient in one, then it has to come voluntarily and is, is there open favoritism? We have a tricolor in the same way we should have a three language policy. Mm. More languages you learn, more batteries for India. Mm. And please remember, yeah. down south there is a kind of trust deficit. We cannot ignore that. So that trust deficit needs to be addressed. And we are very thankful for North Indian friends who were very uh, vocal in support for things like jelly cutter. They are you know, actively, culturally building bridges. We are two hands of the same body. But please remember, two hands. So we have our own differences even in worship systems, even in uh, faith. There are even in temple construction systems and beliefs. There are many different nuances. So we should respect each other. No kind of imposition should be there. But at the same point of time, mother tongue should be there. Uh, some kind of a national link language should be there, the international link language, English should be there. And language is such an emotional and tricky issue. Right. The greatest of Dalit icon, Baba Sahib Ambedkar, moved an amendment to make Sanskrit the national language of India. Mm -hmm. So language has always been a very slippery, emotional and tricky issue in India. We right. should deal it with very, with very sens great sensitivity and we should inspire okay. rather than impose. We should inspire a kind of trust with each other when we have some kind of trust deficit.